What's going on, guys? Welcome back to WWE Network and show where I, Graham G.S. and Matthews, break down all the original content I watch on the WWE Network and on Peacock. And today we're talking the August 17th, 2024 edition of the SmackDown Lowdown. Megan Morant and Scott Stanford in the studio running down the biggest headlines from the show, including replaying the end of the show with Scott Stanford saying that Roman Reigns needs backup and he says yeet, teasing Jey Uso. So even the WWE analysts are kind of leaning into the whole Jey Uso, Jimmy Uso, Paul Heyman, OG Bloodline reunion. No talk of Sami Zayn yet, but hopefully at some point that does eventually happen. He's not OG Bloodline, but he was one of the best parts of the Bloodline back in 2022, early 2023. Um, they also replay the Profits beating DIY in the finals of the short-lived WWE Tag Team Championship number one contenders tournament, earning the shot against the Bloodline for the tag team titles on next week's SmackDown. We hear from the Profits and BFAB backstage. The Profits don't really have a chance to say much when BFAB just says, oh, they showed out tonight, and then DIY show up with Candice LeRae. Ciampa congratulates them on the win and then teases round, true, uh, ra- teases round two rather for down the road, wishing them best of luck against the Bloodline. I thought this was interesting. Now, there was no sign of dissension or whatever, but I thought it was interesting because it is very possible they turn DIY heel. It kind of looked like they were going in that direction before the draft. They didn't go in that direction. I'm glad they didn't. That would have been dumb, at least at that point. Even now, I'm not a real big fan of it. But I thought it was interesting they approached these three um, with Candice, who is already a heel. She is a heel on this show, alongside Indy. We have not seen them on SmackDown lately. But I thought it was interesting because they might be maybe attempting to reunite the way without Dexter Loomis. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, I just saw these six people with each other, and I'm thinking, not that it would be a great match, but it's very possible they turn DIY. Maybe they cost them the tag team title opportunity next week. I hope not, but it's possible. And then you can do Johnny, Ciampa, and Candice versus B-Fab and the Profits. I'd rather just Montez Ford move the fuck on. Like, he's a, he has well outgrown the tag team division. He does not need... The, I mean, they could win the tag titles, and that's fine, but he really should be on his own. Like, maybe he'll turn on Dawkins. I don't know. But I just... I don't really need to see that. I know I said that's something they could do. I don't really need to see it. Um, they don't need to turn DIY heel. Maybe they break up the profits and turn... I, I don't know. That would even be stupider because then you have no top babyface team on the show. So, I don't know. Just something to keep an eye out for. They preview the bloodline of the profits for next week for the WWE Tag Team titles. They replay uh, Blair Davenport beating Naomi one-on-one. We hear from Blair Davenport backstage with Byron Saxton. Blair says that she beat Naomi without help. And she said that Jade and Bianca were not there to help her, that being Naomi. Which is interesting because Naomi wasn't there to help, wasn't, uh, they weren't there to help, or she rather was not there to help them in their quest to regain the WWE Tag Team titles and they were being beaten down a couple of weeks ago. That was a three-on-two disadvantage. Naomi really should have been fucking out there. Unless she was gone for some reason, she wasn't hurt, to my knowledge. I don't know why she wasn't out there. Um, Blair, why, what would, what would, uh, not Blair, but what would, uh, Jade and Bianca be doing out there? I mean, there's, there was no reason for them to be out there because it wasn't as if she was being outnumbered. The tag team champions were not on this show, so I'm not really sure what she's talking about. But she says they were not out there, and typical heel logic, because they were scared of her. And uh, they were scared of her and Alba Fire and Isla Dawn, and that sets up the six-woman tag team match for next week's SmackDown. Scott Stanford says the win was a good confidence booster for Blair Davenport. They replay the opening segment with the WWE Women's Championship celebration being crashed by Meechin. Scott Stanford says that Meechin is in for a taste of pain without kendo sticks against uh, Nia Jax. The size and the strength do not measure up, he says. Um, We hear from LA Knight, and he says how fitting it would be to defend that United States champion, how fitting it will be, rather, to defend that United States championship um, in D.C. next week on SmackDown. And not only that, but he mentions how he grew up not far from there in Hagerstown, Maryland, which is, uh, my geography is fucking terrible, but um, it's not far at all from uh, D.C., so he's going to feel right at home for that match next week. And he mentions that Escobar, when he loses, can do the Pledge of Allegiance to him because he is the nation's champion. So in the studio, they preview Knight and Escobar for next week for the United States Championship. They preview Owens and, uh, uh, Owens, I I wrote down Waller here. They replay that, and they uh, preview Owens and Rhodes for the undisputed WWE Championship at Bash in Berlin. Uh, Scott Stanford says that Kevin Owens will become more fixated on the opportunity. As it gets closer, I mean, he says now he doesn't deserve the opportunity. He's going to get it, obviously. We already know that. But he might, uh, yeah, that, that lust for the championship, that lust for Elizabeth, brother, as uh, Macho Man would say, and that was a terrible impression. 
uh, might get the better of Owens as we head closer to the pay-per-view. And then they hype up the aforementioned matches, the six-woman tag team match, Naomi Belair, Cargill against Fire, Dawn, and Davenport. They hype up Bloodline and the Profits for the WWE Tag Team titles, and Knight and Escobar for the United States Championship next week on SmackDown. So it looks like a pretty good show. It might just end up being decent, but I'm looking forward to SmackDown next week based on how they built it on this show. So a decent episode of SmackDown Lowdown here as we heard from the United States Champion LA Knight. We got to hear from the Profits and BFAB, DIY even, as well as Blair Davenport briefly. So a good show here. Really, really good SmackDown on Friday. Check out my full audio review of the show from Saturday and my written review of SmackDown over at WrestleRant.com. Um, the SmackDown Lowdown review might be delayed next week. I'll be away camping actually. So it might be up on Saturday, Sunday, Monday. I'm not even really sure yet, but keep an eye out for that as it gets closer. Have an awesome one, guys. I'm Graham G.S. Matthews, and I'll catch your ass down the road.